How's it going to everyone? TV? My name is Jack and welcome to my preview for Nottingham Forest versus Aston Villa taking place at the city ground tomorrow. So yeah, look, Villa look like a really dangerous side. Unai Emery's got them playing some lovely, lovely football. Um, they've got some brilliant players. It's going to be difficult. We're obviously not in the best moment at the moment, um, given the fact that we last game we lost 3-0 to Liverpool and then the draw against Luton. Before that, we haven't won, I don't think, in, uh, since September. So, it's, it could be better for us. Um, obviously, it could be worse. We could be in a position of, of, of a Sheffield United or something like that. But, um, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this one. Obviously, at the City ground, it gives us a chance. It does give us a chance. I think if we're away from home, then I don't fancy us too much. But at home, we've got every chance to get something out of anyone. I mean, look at last season. A draw against City. So, look, I think we can't go right on ourselves off straight from the bat. But again, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a difficult game. I think Aston Villa, like I mentioned, have got some fantastic players. Some players who are playing really, really well. Um, and uh, it's not going to be um, a straightforward one at all. Last time we did play them at the City Ground, it was a one all. Um, I think they had Steven Gerrard in charge still then. Ashley Young scored from outside the box. That was kind of around the period of time last season where every single shot from outside the box just seemed to go in against us, which was infuriating, obviously. But look, it didn't cost us in the end, which was the main thing. Um, they're in much a better position right now than where they were back then, um, playing some lovely stuff. Um, you know, just look at some of the players that they've got that, that are firing at the minute. They've got Douglas Louise in the middle of the park. He's been brilliant, along with John McGinn, two fantastic footballers. Ollie Watkins up front, DRB, Cash at the back. You know, you've got Concer and um, Pau Torres. A really, um, a really good side. And, and Emi Martinez in goal won the uh, Yashin Trophy for the best goalkeeper of the year, which I think, Club wise, you know, he was all right. He wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say he was amazing, but you got to just look at that World Cup, that World Cup, that World Cup final, that save against Randall Kola Mawani was incredible. I'll never forget that. Never forget it. You just thought for all the world that for, uh, France were going to do it. They were going to complete the comeback and they were going to become world champions. But a 120th minute save from Martinez was absolutely unbelievable and. That that was a that that didn't obviously didn't win the World Cup itself. They had to still go on and do the penalty shootout, but that was huge, that was absolutely massive, and and um, that's one of my favourite saves for a game that I'm not involved in as a fan. Like obviously, I don't support Argentina or France, um, but that save incredible. Anyway, we 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 diverse diverse we diverge. I don't know what I'm trying to say. We go off topic. Um, like I say, for this one, we're at home, so I do fancy us a little bit more than uh, if we were at Villa Park. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really not sure how I feel about this one. Um, the atmosphere has to be booming. It has to be booming. No question about it. Um, from from a lot of the match going fans on Twitter, um, they're saying that the atmosphere has been been poor this season, been flat. It's not been what it was last year, and and that needs to change. That really needs to change. Um, I'd love myself to be able to go to Forest game. I haven't been able to get to a Forest Premier League game yet this season or last season. Um, it really pains me. It really hurts me. But I understand that there's a ticketing system. I understand that there's fans who have been more regularly than I have who deserve it. Um, and those fans who are there have to make the noise. They have to make their presence known. They have to make it as hard as they can for Aston Villa to play their game. We want to be on top of them. We want to be, you know... Any slight mistake, we want to be on top of the players. Um, you know, say, for example, I don't know, off the top of my head, let's go with, I don't know, Luca Digne um, tries to, I don't know, play it out from the back and, and puts it out for a, a throw-in, or Emi Martinez is hassled by one of our players and, um, you know, hoofs it down the pitch and it, and it forces us we need to be on them we need to make it a, a really difficult place for them to go to um, the fans last season did such a big job got us some vital points and I feel like if we want to get anything from this one the atmosphere has got to be uh, top notch it has got to be top notch um, 
yeah, like I mentioned quickly, I, I'd love to go and watch for us. Of course I would. I'd love to go and see, them, see us in the Premier League. Um, but like I mentioned, I get it. I get it. Um, unfortunately, you know, I had, I mean, not unfortunately, I had a season ticket when I was a, when I was a young lad, I think, um, from probably being seven to about 12. Um, then the ticket prices went up and my uh, grandparents that took me to Forest Games moved up to Nottingham to be with uh, my dad's side of the family a bit more sort of my uncle and one thing and another so I didn't really have a way of getting there regularly my dad works sometimes on the on the weekend so I wasn't able to go to as many games as I'd like um in that period in between and I completely understand I completely understand and there's a lot of people on Twitter that um, are kind of disappointed by it and, and I am disappointed I'm not gonna lie I'd love to be at the game on Sunday I'd love to be at as many games as I can go to but I get it. I understand. I understand that you know we're not gonna. I'm not able to get to a game. It it hurts that I can't go to watch Forest play. But I understand. I get it. And and those fans who are there, who do have the privilege of being at the city ground, I want them to make as much noise as they can. Make it as difficult as possible. You know that clip. You see that clip that gets shared on Twitter um, of the uh, city game at the uh, at the city ground, where we I think we just after we made it one one, and you just see the whole ground in unison, flags swinging around, they were singing, you know, it's not the best song in the world, it's not the most inventive song in the world, but it's effective, for us magic on and off the pitch, it was booming around, the commentators were commenting on it, we need the atmosphere to be at that level, to give us a chance, um, I'm not saying that we've got no chance in the world, of getting anything against Villa, but we need to, 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 to do everything that we can, look at Everton, they always find themselves down in a relegation scrap. And I'm not saying we're in a relegation scrap. I'm just using it as an example. Um, Everton, you know, you often see them. You think Nottingham to be with uh, my dad's side of the family a bit more, sort of my uncle and, and one thing and another. So I didn't really have a way of getting there regularly. My dad works sometimes on the on the weekend. So I wasn't able to go to as many games as I'd like um, in that period in between. And I completely understand. I completely understand. And there's a lot of people on Twitter that um, are kind of, disappointed by it and, and I am disappointed I'm not going to lie I'd love to be at the game on Sunday I'd love to be at as many games as I can go to but I get it I understand I understand that you know we're not going to I'm not able to get to a game it, it hurts that I can't go to watch Forest play but I understand I get it and, and those fans who are there who do have the privilege of being at the city ground I want them to make as much noise as they can make it as difficult as possible you know that clip you see that clip that gets shared on Twitter um, of the uh, city game at the, uh, at the city ground where we I think we just after we made it 1-1 and you just see the whole ground in unison, flags swinging around, they were singing, you know, it's not the best song in the world, it's not the most inventive song in the world, but it's effective, for us magic on and off the pitch, it was booming around, the commentators were commenting on it, we need the atmosphere to be at that level, to give us a chance, um, I'm not saying that we've got no chance in the world, of getting anything against Villa, but we need to, 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 to do everything that we can, look at Everton, they always find themselves down in a relegation scrap. And I'm not saying we're in a relegation scrap. I'm just using it as an example. Um, Everton, you know, you often see them. You think there's no way. There's no way. But their fans make Goodison Park an absolute cauldron. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. We need to um, be that massive 12th man that we need in this game. And, and hopefully that can really pay a huge uh, part in the game. In terms of the match then... Look, I'm not feeling uh, too confident. I think if you're a neutral and you're looking at this one, you're thinking Aston Villa are going to win. We have only lost twice at home in our last 19 home games in the Premier League. So, look, that's a huge plus. We were beaten at home this season, which, again, is massive. But... Look, we've got to be on our on our A game. We've got to be on top of, of our performance. We've got to make sure that we are playing um, the best that we possibly can. And I feel like against Villa, look, it's going to be hard. But if we do that, we can get something out of it. Villa are a, are a team that are a bit hit and miss. Opening day, they got thrashed, thrashed by Newcastle. But then this season, they've gone on and thrashed Brighton. So hopefully we come up against a team that played Newcastle rather than a team that played Brighton. And hopefully we can get something from the game. Um, but yeah, Villa, lovely side. Got some brilliant footballers. Buendia, Cash, um, Konza Mings, um, uh, uh, Paul Torres. I think Mings might be out. I'm not too sure. Um, but, you know, DRB, they've got kind of... 
uh, Watkins and, 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 and Douglas Louise McGinn, some wonderful footballers. And um, look, we've got some brilliant players too. Our midfield needs to be on top of our on top of their game. You know, if we're gonna go with that Mangar, Sangari, Dominguez midfield, we've got to have them playing at the top of their levels, playing as much as you know, the best that they can, uh, winning the ball back, breaking things up, keeping the ball You've got pace that can go on the wings as well and and one thing or another. So, look, I'm feeling confident that um, if we put in a 100% performance that we can get something from it. But if we don't, then Villa, you know, Villa could have a field day. It, it's one of them ones. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the starting eleven for us then, I'll go with... Look, it looks like from interviews and things that Cooper's going to go with Turner again. For me, I think... It's probably time to go for Akademos. He's not getting any happier with not playing. Um, and that, I don't know what Turner was thinking for that third goal against Liverpool. Come flying out like that, I, I don't know. I don't know what was going through his head. But I think for me it's time. I, I like Turner, I rate him a lot. But I think for me it's time for Vlachadimos, unfortunately. Um, for Turner, I think it needs to be done. Um, we played a back five against... Uh, Liverpool, but I think now we're at home, we've got to go for a four. Offers a little bit more in midfield, a little bit more on the flanks going forward. So I think we're going with a four. I'd love to see Ola Aina, um back in the starting eleven. Um, not sure a hundred percent of his fitness, but it would be it would be good to see that. Um, and then you know maybe maybe sort of um, I don't know. You you can you can play um, Aina either left or right. So for me, I think if you play him on the left, then you want to see someone like Aurier on the right. If you if you want to put him on the left, then you, you want to so if you want to put him on the left, you want to see someone like Aurier on the right. If you want to see him on the right, then you put Tavares or someone like that on the left. Centre arms for me, Bolly and uh, Murillo. I think you know for me, you, you you've got to go with them. I've also just had a quick thought. If you put um, if he's fit, Aurier, uh, not sorry. Aina on the right near Catty as left back. It worked well against Brentford, so that's a that's an option we can go down. But for me, Bolly and, and Murillo have to start there. They've been brilliant. They've been really really good for us this season. Same midfield three that I did mention earlier on, and then the front three. I think you go with Alanga, Gibbs, White, and Chris Wood. If uh, Chris Wood is okay, I think he's fine. I don't know a reason why he wouldn't be. But if the main man, Tyro Awanji, is fit and available to play, he has to start without a shadow of a doubt. We're so much better with him. We look a little bit toothless without him. He's such an integral part to what we want to do. He's got to play. He's got to play if he's fit enough. If not, don't rush him back. But, man, that guy is so good at football. He's so good at scoring goals. If we can get him in the start 11, absolutely do it, in my opinion. So yeah, look, I'm not feeling 100% confident. I could either see it going one of two ways. I could see us nicking something, or I could see them having a lovely, uh, you know, a lovely day out in, uh, at Trent side. But I'm going to go with my heart. I'm going to go with my heart. I'm going to say not too far as to Aston Villa nil. Why not Aston Villa nil? Let's be bold. Let's be bold in our prediction. Go with the goals. Uh, Gibbs White. He'd love a goal against Villa, being a Wolves boy. And then also let's go with. Willy Bolly, a former Wolves player, scored against Villa. Would it be lovely? So, yeah, if you did enjoy the video, smash the like button, subscribe if you are new around here and you haven't already. Let us know in the comment section about what you think is going to happen in the game and all that good stuff. And come on, you Reds, do us proud. We need another three points on the board. Um, yeah, be massive, absolutely massive. Come on, you Reds.